is to call myself uh, into a meeting. So um, that's when I started pursuing my discovery, uh, 207, 208, uh, at least it took me almost three, four, five years there to really have clarity of what really my life purpose is. And I can assure you, I had to do this prayer free. Uh, it's not somewhere you read just a journal and the journal tells you about your life. No, you have read it to refract yourself, your life, prayer free. Um, and I cannot delink the aspect, of course, uh, of God, because it's God who gives us the identity and the purpose. So you have read it to be that prayerful um, environment we to discover the purpose. However, of course, there are tools, there are reflections, there are journeys that somebody can walk with you to discover your life. But that's my brief journey in terms of how I got into purpose coaching. Of course, later now I had to uh, invest myself in myself every in various programs, uh, lead a lot, uh, get liberations from God, and many things, of course, that uh, had to accompany my um, my journey of discovery. So I told God, of course, I promise that uh, if I get my purpose right, I also want to support other people and work with other people who are in the same journey to discover their purpose. And that's why I do purpose coaching. So I'm a founder of a company called uh, Purposeverse and also a consultancy firm called Inquest Research and Consulting. And both the two outfits, we deal with purpose transformation. Uh, both leadership, consultancy, and many other things, of course, that God has allowed us to do. So that's a quick brief of this. So uh, four years ago, or actually almost had it five years ago, we launched a unique program we call uh, Leveraging Your Life Purpose for Impact and Growth. And this is a 10-week series that uh, helps you work with you in terms of helping you go through uh, what patients have done described, the five Fs. So the five Fs is the finding your purpose, then fueling that purpose, because it needs some drive and energy to, to move, then focusing on it, because there are enough distractions in the market that may deny you to actually focus on your purpose. And then when you find, you all know the issue of the role of focus, and then after focusing, you need to fulfill it. That means you deliver it, because it's a debt that you are born with. So you need to pay that debt. And then, of course, uh, there is the aspect of future proofing. Future proofing means ability to be able to live beyond your tenor or your lifetime. And purpose always will go beyond you. It's what you actually live. It has an aspect of impacting future generation way after yourself. It's no longer physically living, but in the environment that God has allowed, allowed us to exist, that is the universe, you still have continued existence through your impact. So that's generally what is covered in that process. Um, so today we are doing a free talk and it's going to be very packed. So you're going to allow me to move very fast because I have a lot to unpack today and I don't want to take more than one, one hour and they're about. So move very fast. Uh, I can see one or two people who have attended few of my programs and therefore part of the content might be familiar, but there's always a way of seeing something new. Uh, even when it is repeated. So I'm going to share my screen and my slides, but I also want, if there's any question or comment, put it on the chat, and I'm going to have time to be able to engage uh, with such questions. Um, maybe I'll begin by posing a question because I like being you know, engaging. Um, and you can put on this on chat as we continue. Um, what would you... What would you say in terms of the differentiation between finding purpose and finding meaning. I know I'm going to answer that somewhere in my slides, but mm -hmm. there is one thing that I know people get confused in terms of, am I finding purpose or am I, find, am I finding meaning in life? Okay. And I want to pose that as a question. They look like they're the same, but I want to leave it as a, as a question to be able to put that. Um, and, and you can share your thoughts in the uh, in the chat section. Finding purpose and finding meaning, those two things. We're going to talk about them later. So kindly put your thoughts in what you think. Do you think they are the same? Is life the same as meaning? So if I found meaning, I have found my purpose. If I found my purpose, I found meaning. I would like to hear from you, but I'm going to discuss that maybe later towards the end in terms of uh, that uh, discourse. So let me share some screens. And uh, again, you bear with me because we are recording. Um, I'm likely to move quite fast. 
uh, but we can make sure at least you can access these uh, way later. Just give me a second. Right, Lois, you could confirm you can see my screen on behalf of the list? Yes, I can see. All right. Yes, I can see. All right, thank you. So I have one motivation, and this motivation is to make people live fulfilling, impactful, and trusted in life. That, that's a motivation for me in life. Uh, I call it fit living, living fit. Uh, that's just a, a, an acronym. Um, if you check those three words, they actually unpack the whole essence of life. And there is no order. So I don't mean that you start with the fulfilling. No, you don't have to start with the fulfillment. In fact, if I was to put it in order, I'll start with impactful. Because you are not born for yourself. You are born to be able to serve God. And through serving God, also you serve humanity. You'll serve other people. So nobody was born for yourself. Otherwise, if you are born for yourself, it contradicts the whole essence of life. So you find that God has made sure that we are all entangled. Entangled means uh, we all have taken breakfast, I'm sure. Or if not, you are just about to take breakfast. Um, there's Sheila, I don't know what you'll be taking in breakfast if you have not taken them. Maybe some nice uh, um, uh, cereals. Uh, you may be taking some eggs. <laughs> But I can ask <laughs> I, I can ask a question. Whatever you're going to take or you've taken, uh, chances are, and these are probability, chances are you didn't farm it. So if you're taking some nice um, uh, eggs, of course, if you if you're if you're having some farm somewhere, then you might tell me, yeah, I've just taken it from the from the from my farm. If you're taking some arul, there's a chance uh, there's somebody somewhere else who actually uh, had farmed that arul. In a typical day, even the cloth you're wearing was made by somebody. Um, most of the things that you interact during the day, the Zoom we are using right now, was invented by somebody. Um, the lenses I'm wearing, somebody had to receive a revelation from God to have a way in which they can correct our sight through these grasses. Now, if you start looking at life that way, you discover... <laughs> Actually, life is so entangled that it is because of the life of others, we actually ourselves find life worth living. That if you move the life of others, actually there's no essence of life. And, and this is also goes to the way people say, I'm a self-made millionaire. And I tell them, come on, nobody is self-made. You know, that people call themselves self-made somebody. You can't tell me you're self-made. Um, if somebody tells you I'm a self-made millionaire, I'm a self-made innovator, and they'll tell you how, you ask them, what did you do? They'll, you, they'll tell you, um, I went to YouTube, I watched videos, I watched clips and all that to, to, to maybe discover how to do things, and therefore I am self-made. And I tell them, by just that description, you are not self-made. Life was so entangled within others that lifted you up. Of course, it's God who gives us the revelation and insight and all that. And go, you can connect directly to God and give you a lot of self-actualization and all that. But you discover there's nobody who is self-made. You, 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 maybe you have gone to YouTube and have searched content on how to make um, nice cups. And then you go and start making molding cups. You didn't make yourself. That knowledge, God entrusted somebody else. And that somebody else spoke to, to you through whether it's through channels in social media. And then there you got the knowledge. So you may think you are self-made just because you didn't go to school. So that means you sat down and you just, it's you and your laptop and your mobile. But you're tapping a certain endowment from other people. And that's how life is. It's entangled. And through that entanglement is why you impact other people. So question is now, you yourself, now if you look at your life, how do your life impact others? Will there be a difference if Sheila is not there? If Peterson is not there? If Lois is not there? Will, will, will creation really miss anything? That's a big question to ask. Because if it means, then it means there's void. There was no essence for life. That's why life has to be impactful. There's a rationale why God 
made you to exist or created you to exist in such a time, this generation, you have seen 2024, it is all by intent and purpose. So those three, fulfilling, impactful, and trust. And trusting is for future generations. So the way I impact them is fulfilling, of course, you yourself, because God is also interested in you as you serve his purpose. You yourself. Then impactful means how you impact in others. And transcending is how you impact future generation. And I hope you see that dimension. The dimension of self, the dimension of others, dimension of future generation. I was discussing something yesterday with somebody and I was asking, I mean, uh, same question I ask again, what will be written of you if you are to an account, write an account right now, 300 years to come? What will be written? If I give you a brand paper, you just write about myself, 300 years to come, you'll get shocked. I don't think you start writing, Gabriel lived, he had a big house and a machinette, he was earning a salary of 2000 He was uh, having, um, a, you know, a company. All those things are less likely to appear anywhere. Even people who have made remarkable things in the world, um, whoever existed, we are not told about even where they were staying. We were never told about what they owned. We were only told of a revolution or a transformation they made that brought impact during their time. And it's a very serious conversation for all of us. And every one of us has a way in which we connect into that. It doesn't have to be at a global level. It doesn't have to be in a, um, um, maybe a national level. It can even be in the context of maybe your community or even within your family. So that's the essence of this program. It can make us be able to focus on all these dimensions. You may notice we are being pushed by what we call careerism. And careerism has killed so many destinies. Because careerism is about... I get a job, I get paid, you know, and, and life goes on. And you'll discover actually you're living for yourself. Take your children to school. Like the lady I talked about, you taken all the children to school, even the children who are working. Uh, and then you think somebody will be happy. You're living the best house you have ever thought. You're driving the best car. You've done all the degrees and programs that you wanted, but still there is voidness at the end of the day. If what you're doing is not attached to purpose. Now, um, so I want to move fast, as I said, so you allow me because we are going to share the recording, but so that I do justice um, of the time, I'm going to run fast, then you can request for the recording. I'm sure this is something that you can keep on replaying and it's going to be transformation in your life. So I believe that every human being has a purpose that should impact people and the planet. So you have people to impact your purpose, impact people, and also impact the planet. Um, there's a rising quest for meaning. And there are questions that are very important. You cannot discuss purpose without discussing identity. Um, in those people who will talk about this space, they will talk about the IPD. IPD is identity, purpose, and destiny. All questions of human being, the humanity, struggle with those three. Who am I? The identity issue. How did I just happen? Did I just, uh, just a random correlation of spams and between my mom and dad and magic happens and biology took place and now I'm there. Is this just a biological existence? Is it a random mutation that is unguided process from those guys who try to propagate Darwinism theory in terms of evolution? Life could also be nowhere. I mean, you just exist, you die, and that is it. Uh, you know, the, the people who are more materialistic in terms of nature, who don't believe in God, of course, they'll go that direction, the atheist. But no matter how you look at it, that's a real question in every humanity in terms of who am I? And where did I come from? Where was I born? What am I here on earth and space time to do? And what do I owe creation? This is the question I was asking about. What will the creation miss if you are never born? So never were born. What will creation ever miss? Will there be anything or life can just continue as usual? If it continues, then there's a bit of vanity in terms of that. Edition. So these are serious questions. And you'll discover that most of, you know, all of us as human beings, we are predisposed at one point. During COVID, everybody was being shocked because we thought maybe we are going to be wiped out of there. Um, existence. And, and I know there's a slide I'm going to show. We had 1.5 billion Google searches in June 2021. People going online to search how to find my life purpose. 
when we were shaken to the core, you could not go to jobs. The businesses you had, you closed down. Guess what people are thinking? Wait a minute. If I am no longer to exist tomorrow, why did I, why was even my born? How, to, how do I fight it? You know, that was the conversation during COVID, especially around 2021, mid-year 2021. It's because at the heart of every human existence, there's always that question. Who am I? And why was I born? And what am I here for? And you'll discover things that you desired to achieve. When you achieve them, you still find some voidness. It's like a chase after the weed. Hey, you thought finishing an MBA is good and you're going to look good. Then you finish, and guess what happens? <laughs> you, still, you still feel voidness. I met people who are doing their that PhD, who are actually still pursue their, they are looking for their purpose. Uh, people are doing their third, fourth degree. They are still pursuing their purpose. So it, it, they are looking for that. They are still looking for that meaning. But it's all depend on your view because world view is very important, how you see the world. And you can say, um, I'm just a living organism. I'm an animal, a living organism. Animism, you can have that mindset. Or you can believe that God, there's a God and or spiritual this me, which is biblical this me. You can also have secular view. Uh, in the... Animism, of course, in the, the, in the aspect of sacredness and the secularity of nature, they talk about you have one organic pole. You talk about one consciousness. I know there's a lot of Asian mythology around this, uh, which also is quite not very fulfilling. So we are all, of course, in one organic whole. A baby recordism, of course, we talk about it is a God who is a creator, and I believe in that. And the secularism, of course, you say is the nature. They call it the, 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 the mother nature and all that. So there are no gods who rule in the nature. It's just nature by itself. And, and in my coaching, I deal with all manner of people who get into my life. I have met all everybody. I have met atheists. I have met naturalism. I have met all manner of people. And there's always still converging the issue of purpose. Um, human are primary spirit as an amazing. There's a difference between just spirit and, of course, the biblical uh, spiritual aspect. That's a difference. So in the biblical, of course, the human are spiritual and physical. There's a bit of convergence there, but secularism will think human are physical, mouth and stomach. You eat, you are what you eat, and when you eat, you die, and that is it. You, if you have children that you leave behind, they also do the same, and that's how life is all about. That's secularism. Then, of course, I mean, we'll talk about physical world and live of limited value. In fact, this make capitalism the big issue. Because when you think things are scarce and the scarcity of resources, people fight for it. So Mother Earth is quite mean. The Earth and the physical resource is very mean. So, and because of that limited value, we have to compete. But the biblical thing of course, the world is an ecosystem that is open. Secularism of course, the world is a closed system. Animism and secularism will always promote capitalism. And that's why people fight in so many things. Even corruption is because you think if I don't eat, some of those will eat, and therefore I want to take my share. So you'll find some of these things are worldview. They are worldview issues on what people have believed. In terms of time, and even, of course, we talk about history is on a wheel. A wheel. Uh, that's why we are trying to discover maybe things like time, space, travel, time travel, and all that. The biblical theism, of course, in time that there's a generational intent for everybody at the time that they live to pursue a certain purpose. So, and the history is going somewhere. There will be an account at the end of the day, meaning there's an eternity where, of course, things will be judged and, of course, you'll be able to give an account. Then, of course, secularism is about time is running out, eh? because the world, the, the solar system is drying up and very soon we might collapse into a deep freeze. And there's a whole cosmology study around it in terms of our scientists, of course, you try to attempt to explain that. And, and I'm privy to that. So there are many worldviews out there, and this can be very confusing. And each one of them can actually give a case, and you tend almost to believe in that. I believe in the biblical themes, you know, that the world is created, of course, there is God. And because there is a creator, the creator has an intent in purpose, and purpose in mind. You just don't make this mobile phone for the sake of making it. It's not just an adventure. That you're walking on the park and you discover, whoop, I have a mobile phone. There must be a need that was there that you're trying to address. So when he created us, there's something that he wants you to fulfill in the existence of time. So that's the, 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 the view of this uh, process. So um, for you to go through the journey of Papa, you have to focus on what you call transformation, um, which helps you become better. That means evolution, kind of evolve, become better. I don't mean the evolution in terms of the Darwinism, no. When you talk about transformation and change, those are two different things. If you're looking for change where you want your life to be better, your life to be cheaper, your life to be fast, you know, things to move faster, 
you know all those things and here you can even address it in an organization if you're running a business those things where you add an er you add an in al at the end you want to become fatter <laughs> slimmer all those are statements for change they are not transformation you can get slimmer but you have not transformed so those are two different things. Now, purpose conversation is mostly a transformation journey. There has to be a complete shift or paradigm shift or a difference or an a kind of an evolved state of your existence. And that's the way you can say that you're living your purpose. So it's a whole transformation issue. It changes you first. You have to change your paradigm, the way you're thinking and many other things for you to go to live. Now, I love this scripture. Uh, Ephesians 2.10 that talks about we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ so that we can do good things. He planned for us a long time ago. Now, if you look at that last statement, planned for us, meaning purpose precedes your existence. So, before you exist, the intent and the purpose for you to exist was, was there. That means before I made this phone, somebody bought, made this phone, he had thought about communication gap. So purpose always will precede the existence. And there's a scripture in Genesis 2.5 uh, where God, in the account of creation, says that there was no um, shlab in the garden. And it says because God had not sent rain and there was no man in the garden to actually till it, to work on the garden. So God had withheld in terms of vegetation, as a creation, there was no vegetation. Why? There was no, God had not sent rain and there was no man to work. So it's the work was before man. And for those who uh, do family coaching and, uh, you know, um, the, the role of man and all that, I know there's a statement that people would always coin from there that God gave man work before he gave man the wife. <laughs> work, preceded, work was there before wife, the two W. Because a, a human being, especially a man, is more gravitated around work and wife. So, but work was before wife. God created work before wife. And uh, that's why it's dangerous for a wife who is, uh, if you're a lady and you're getting married to a man who doesn't have clarity of the work, and the work came in the purpose. A man without a purpose will be dangerous to your life as a lady. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a hope. You can even observe nature and see. If your man, if your husband is very purpose, there's a high chance because you are created to be a suitable helper, what are you helping? You are helping in the work. The purpose of that man. It's a mystery that even it comes to marriage. So you find this purpose conversation is a whole issue in terms of even on how it influences marriages uh, as men in terms of our manhood, as ladies in terms of how God has positioned you. It's a whole, whole, whole issue. And you find there's a whole singularity around it. So... Um, so we are created a new class, but to do the good thing, so purpose has to be something redemptive. Good thing means something that, of course, will add value. So you can't tell me you are doing your purpose by being a terrorist. No, that's not purpose. It must be good things, but he planned you. So they, they planned for you those pur the purpose before you're born. And that means it is uh, preceded, um, it preceded your existence. There's also a scripture I like here about uh, David. So it says that David, after he had served the purpose of God, notice. The purpose of God. So it's not your purpose. Yeah, you call it my purpose, but it's God's purpose on my life or over my life. So it's God's purpose in his own generation. There's a timeline aspect there. That's what we call a lifetime and going beyond that. So in his own generation, he fell asleep and so decay. Now, when you serve your purpose, your essence for living at that point doesn't have to continue. And that's why Jesus himself only lived for 33 years and died. You don't have to live 200 years. If God allows you to extend your purpose impact, it's okay. But the moment you serve the purpose, if that's the reason why you are born and you have fulfilled it completely, that means you have accounted for it, you know what? Your life should stop, even when you are 20 years, even when you are 50 years. So it's not about the longevity of life, no. Because again, I know if you study the Japanese lifestyle, they talk about the Ikigai, it's more of longevity and meaning. And for sure, they live long because of that. So by even the biology and the psychology of, of life. So in this scripture, of course, talks about that the purpose is God-given, there's a service, and of course, it's for a generation. Now, we have four dimensions of purpose. The universal purpose, this is the purpose for every creation. There's purpose for human being, the humanity. All of us as human beings combined, 
There's a reason why we were created. Then there's a generational purpose. And you've seen even for David, there was that aspect of generation. Um, there's also another scripture that people like quoting, especially for those who are Bible believers, in terms of the children of Issachar. And they say that for the children of Issachar understood their time and what they needed to do. So there's a time intelligence and what they needed to do to serve the, that time in terms of generation. So question is, because you are born in the 20, uh, what you call 21st generation, this is 21st century, what is the generational purpose that you're serving, that you are part of? That's a very significant question. Why were you not born in the 10th century? Why were you not born in the BC? Why were you born 21st century? If you start thinking about that, your life becomes very different in terms of the intent. You start living in an intent, and that makes you get very profound revelations. Then, beside that is what you call the purpose for an individual. You as an individual, you have now your individual purpose. Now, this is usually very confusing again, and this is why we have this coaching. And today I'm just giving you very introductions. When you go to the deep end, of course, you start discussing these one by one. When I ask people, especially for believers, anybody who have a form of faith, they ask me, what is your purpose? They tell you to serve God. Do you think that's purpose? To serve God? Yes, but that's a universal purpose. By universal, I mean everybody, 7.8 billion. God's intention is for them to serve him. Some will serve them as engineers. Some will serve them as accountants. That's okay. But what is that unique purpose for you as Gabriel, for you as Patience, for you as Sheila, for you as Paul? That's where the question is. So there's the generic serving God, worshiping, glorifying, improving lifestyle. Everybody should improve life, life of others. We should all be impactful to others. If you check well, they are very generic statements. They are trying to attempt to describe the universal purpose, not the individual purpose. So there's a whole dilemma there in terms of how you go to the singularity of the individual purpose. And that's where mostly you find many people will get stuck. We, unco we unpack that during the coaching in terms of demystifying how to make sure you get a singular, the, the individual purpose itself, as much as it's also serving the wider. So you start working in the reverse. The reverse is that your individual life purpose should be somehow consistent with the generational purpose. And the generational purpose is somehow woven within the general purpose of humankind. And that general purpose of humankind is woven within the entire creation. And all that still is God's purpose. So there's a connection. You cannot delink yourself within the other dimension of our purpose. We unpack that. But then the question for us is that... Uh, Failure to pursue our purpose, what does that happen? There are people who we actually then um, put at risk. There are people suffering in jail because maybe Lois was meant to be to do something to prevent them to go to jail. There are people suffering depression because Shira was to write a book, but she has uh, refused to write the book. And because of not writing the book, a person who could have read your message and get encouraged and don't commit whatever, suicide or get into depression, you have denied them. As I said, purpose is for others. It's not for yourself. So failure to do your purpose, you are actually denying other people their grace because there's grace inside you that should fruit somebody else. So kind of neglect of purpose to survive is a whole waste to other people. And when you start thinking about that, it will make you become selfless, literally. Because the selfish interests have made us pursue our own things by the detriment of others who should be enjoying what God has endured. You are like a well. The well has oil. The oil needs to flow to other people. So you need to create a, a fountain. So you should be the well. All of us have wells inside of us. A deposit. It's kind of a potential. But that oil requires some channel to be dispensed so that other people enjoy that grace. That's a big conversation. We cannot exhaust that. But that's the essence of us. So either out of ignorance, comfort zone, disobedience, because you're, it's about survival, we end up denying other people the opportunity to uh, mm -hmm. enjoy our purpose. And that's why I have these, what we call the, the, the realms of life, 
We have the survival where it's about adding a living, your own personal living, very selfish. And we always start here. Um, research done even in business, over 67% of businesses actually, they were started by people wanting to survive purely to find a living because I'm jobless, I need a job to earn a living. If you are somebody who are looking for a job so that I pay rent, I get food, uh, I survive. That's purely the motivation of many people. Why are you going to do another MBA? Because I need to get a promotion so that I earn more money, I build a house. That house is for yourself still. Survival. You may notice that as like a trap. It's like a prison by itself. And I also like quoting the Bible again a lot. Christ himself in Matthew, I think, 6 talks about do not worry what to eat, what to drink, what to dress. That means clothing. Because even pagan, in fact, Christ himself, God himself knows about those things. We say, don't worry. And then there, there are heads where he talk about you pursue his kingdom. So, and other things will be added to you. And I also struggle with the same because in almost like 13 years of my life, I was literally surviving. I was from one job to another. I had started several businesses. I started businesses even before I left my, from employment. But I can say I was also motivated in the same aspect until I got that liberation. Where am I doing what I'm doing? And I discovered when I aligned myself to purpose, there's a way even God himself automatically take over. He take over your responsibility. But if you're pursuing life for survival, let me tell you, you'll survive for life. You'll survive until eternity, until you're no more. That's the challenge. You survive when you're 40s, 50s, 60s, 80s, and still die surviving. But if you pursue your purpose and start anchoring yourself on your purpose, what happens is that literally there's a way in that purpose God provides for you. I usually give a good example. If I send you to Mozambique as the ambassador of Kenya, who should provide you in Mozambique? It's the government that have sent you. So why would you go and struggle in Mozambique and you're representing Kenya? Kenya is the one to bring. There's a question there. So if we came from God and he came, he told he kind of positioned us to come and pursue a certain course. Who should take care of our business? It is God Himself. So you find that you are your your assurance, even what you call galvanization or assurance, is around the purpose aspect. If you're doing what God intended to do, do you know what? God will immobilize angels and bodyguards to make sure your life is not harmed until you execute that purpose. The reason sometimes we are insecure in life is because we are not in purpose. Now, if you kind of overcome the survival, you go to engagement level, and then finally you can go to the impact. Engagement is where you account time. And sometimes you can end up becoming too busy, but no impact. So because you can account what you have done 8 to 5 p.m., too busy, tired at the end of the day. But if somebody asks you, what is transcending? What is the impact? What is the fulfillment? There's no fulfillment, no transcending impact, no legacy. In fact, your well-being is also compromised and there's no redemption to others. We unpack this wheel in the coaching conversations in more in-depth and I hope at least you'll be able to get So you can see there's a lot of paradigm shift. It is moving you from what you call the Maslow hierarchy of needs. We don't use Maslow hierarchy of needs in purpose coaching because you reverse it. You start with the actualization itself because you're already born. We read the Ephesians 2.10. You're already born, and God had already have the plan for you. So it's your refusal to discover it that make you start meeting the uh, the, physiolog the, phys uh, the the physical needs for survival, the physiological needs, all those other things that are in the master hierarchy of needs. It's actually because of our neglect and ignorance of not pursuing the purpose are it. So you can discover your purpose when you're 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, only that, of course, you have to be intentional in that process. Um, let me give you some statistics. 87% of the people in the world are unhappy. We all know these statistics by Garab News. 87%. People wake up every day to do things they hate, but they have to do it because you have to pay bills at the end of the day. It's a serious disconnect. 60% of the study we do in the campus and university and colleges are for jobs that don't exist. So I'm not discouraging you to pursue the next course. I'm sure even myself, I'm doing another course. But I wish I knew my purpose before because there are some investments I have made which are very wasteful. There are some courses I did sometimes later I discovered, wait a minute, this thing, I would not have done it if I knew what I know today. So there are people who are doing courses that they discover this thing is actually not really helping me. 
Intelligence is really replacing human judgment. I love AI. Organizations are moving from profit to purpose. These are disruptions happening in the market. Over 1.5 billion people searches in 2021. 1.5 billion. I know the, the yellow uh, is a bit distorted there. We had 1.5 billion online searches, people searching how to find my life purpose in 2021, June. Research by uh, CB Insight says, when they interviewed the startups, people are in business now, 42% of why they fail is because there's no need. Can I tell you, there's a direct connection between purpose and need. If people need encouragement, that's a need. You can respond to encouragement through a business and you can offer motivational speaking as a business. So, when you hear startups and businesses are failing because of lack of need, the other paraphrased version is the business is not purpose-led. There's no way God could have created you to come and serve a purpose that is not addressing a need. And we have different types of needs generally. So you discover that your purpose is attached to a need in other. Other people's need is something that you're doing. You're fulfilling yourself. The reason why you will do um, encouragement is because the people who are already discouraged or uh, maybe they are in distress. That's why you need somebody to encourage them. Um, the people who need uh, knowledge, maybe because there is ignorance, it's a reason why God prays you to be a knowledge worker or a knowledge expert. So you find there's always an entanglement, kind of we our lives are woven. Your need is actually my purpose, my motivation. Now, when businesses are closing because there is no need, you can almost say they are purposeless businesses. And I also do a lot of consultancy and coaching for businesses. I can assure you this is a big conversation in the market. And have, the statistics are there still. Um, over 40% of people are considering to leave their employment. Uh, this was from Microsoft. Almost a half of our population are saying, I want to get the next job. You are actually to go over 60 transitions in life. Question is, what is the direction? I don't want to talk about that aspect of quantum. It's a deep one. We talk about later. Fifty percent of employees, when we surveyed, we did a survey sometimes back, and only fifty percent of employees were saying their employer invests in their life purpose. That means eighty-five percent. It's about work. You are like just an extra pair of hands, like a machine, like a robot. Work, work, work. The employer doesn't care about your life purpose completely. You can see the broken world. Harvard Business Review in 2022, uh, January, for those who read articles, research articles, they will say it. the next most popular job in the sea level, sea level is the sea suit. They say that is chief purpose officer. We used to have COO, chief operation officer, chief finance officer, chief executive officer. The job that they said is fast rising right now, especially in the big 500, Fortune 500 company, is a role called chief purpose officer. They are also calling it chief impact officer. If you go to LinkedIn and search, search, you find some new roles coming up, chief purpose officer or chief impact officer. They are more focused on the ESG in terms of sustainability, impact and sustainability and all that. But when you investigate, they are actually talking about purpose. Uh, my prediction is that in future, the only organization that I'm going to exist, whether it's business organizations, the future is only bright for redemptive purpose-led organization. So if you your business is fulfilling a certain specific need in the community, in the planet, you are in business. Because there's a need. There's a need. You just need to discover that. Then, um, an article that I bounced on in LinkedIn, Executive Search Review Newsletter, says mission-driven organizations have become the go-to place for employment. If you're in business or employer, you're an employer looking for people to work with, do you know what people are doing currently? When you're interviewing them, they're asking you, why does this organization exist? They want to know, can I connect my life purpose with the organizational life purpose so that then the two give impact? So very soon you are going to lose employees or even you are looking for a job. If the employer does not align in terms of the organizational purpose and your individual purpose does not align, you are likely not to get that employment. I would love to work with people who are also, their purpose aligned to my purpose. Because at that point, you don't need a boss. You don't need a manager. You don't need a supervisor. You don't need a performance appraisals. You don't need all those things. Because if people are pursuing their purpose, they are self-motivated. They are self-accountable to themselves and God. And one of my vision is that I want to reach a place where 
one day you will not be requested for a CV. I know I've quoted this many in my socials in LinkedIn somewhere. When I said I look for a future where there will be no CV or a resume. Somebody will only ask you for your purpose profile only. If I give you my profile, my purpose profile, you hire me. You don't care whether I have a degree or not. I look up, I look for one day where that would be a reality. So these are global trends on what is happening there. According to Mackenzie, we all know, of course, now I'm speaking out to professionals who love this professional stuff. Uh, Mackenzie says, of course, uh, when employees find meaning in their work, they're able to improve their performance by that 3%. They are 75% likely to be committed and they are in the organization. That means retention, employee retention, where somebody can serve even for 20 years, serve the, the job for 20 years plus. And they're also 49% less likely to leave in terms of, again, attrition. All these are conventional. They are all pointing to you that there's a global reset somewhere about focus on life purpose. Life is not just as the way we used to know it. Things are shifting drastically but i say it's a god's divine schedule so that also people focus on what matters most our only search people start business for freedom i talk to people when they are leaving employment and ask them why are you leaving they tell me you know i don't i want to become my own boss and i ask them that's the wrong reason <laughs> long reason if you want to become your own boss long reason so people are motivated to go and start businesses because they want to run away from being employed which is wrong when I discovered my purpose, I still served my employer for another four years. You don't have to resign. What happens is that you become more intentional and you become more productive. And I tell people, especially leaders and HR professionals, you want employees to give you value, make sure they discover their life purpose. You will even drop those performance appraisals. We invest a lot of money training people from one program to another, we sponsor them. Um, I'll give you my, when I was in a HR business partner in one of the organizations, we sent guys to UK, London, for two weeks, London Business School. The organization spent several millions of money, tens of millions of money, over 38 million. These wow. guys went to UK, they did this uh, program, executive leadership program. We thought these guys are going to come and do others when they came back. Guess what? When they came back, <laughs> we tried to look for return on investment, value for money. If I, it's like they even were worse because now they have a pride and ego. I have went to, you know, uh, Harvard. I went to London. Those ones went to UK, London Business School. And I, I look at it, I'm like, wait a minute. No single transformation. So you are investing with a lot of money, training people, thinking they're going to give you value. I can assure you this is a, and I have tested it. Allow people to focus on their life purpose and discover it and provide them that environment. Let me tell you, they will be fired themselves. So it's a secret. And this is the reason why I learned a program. I learned a network called Purpose Red uh, HR Network. It, it's part of the conversation. How can we make sure even the HR, the human resource people are uh, doing purpose-led um, readership? Now look at the, on the right side there, what keeps you survival? 88% of the things that motivate us on everything that you do on a daily is survival. Remember the wheel I show you? Survival, engagement realm, and finally the impact realm. Majority of our life is around survival. When it's around survival, automatically, it will keep you in prison for the life, for the rest of your life. Managers, for those I know I have a mix of people here. Managers, is there a threat to life purpose by AI? I want to decode this. I love AI, artificial intelligence. And apparently I also have a technical background in the same because I do a lot of stuff on that space. So I understand the whole AI space. But you know, for me, AI is not a threat to human purpose. Not at all. But I'll give a disclaimer. If your work is transactional, be afraid. AI has taken your work. And I'll give you a description here. If you're going through grief and people come to encourage you when you're going through a difficult situation, people come and encourage you. They might come try to administer some, you know, um, even therapy and other things that you go through. You may be talked to by 10 people. 10 people may come, assume they even has a script where they come and tell you, oh, so sorry, Royce. No, 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 no. They give you a script, the same script. So I'm just assuming, I want you to play a thought experiment. They come and give you the same script. 
one thing that is likely to happen is this. There is that one person who you will go back and tell the person, hey, Jane, you are such an, an encouragement to me. Yet, there were many 20 others who even came, they even cried with you, they, you know, they emoted with you, they empathized, all those things, but you never got the transformation from them or the empowerment from them or the consolation or the comfort from them. There's one person who came and sat there and even told you, Jane, so sorry, we are together and this is it. And yet that could be the person you are going to say, you impacted my life. You were an encouragement to me. Maybe the only said two words. Good morning. Do you know what was happening in that situation? Who can guess? How come it could be just the person even who said least? Who you are likely to say you were an encouragement to me. But the other people even who spent time with you there, they cried with you, but probably you didn't have. Do you know what is happening there? And if you understand this, you understand that with this, there is no threat to human purpose. It is because when I'm speaking to you, when I'm relating with you, it is beyond the transaction. It is beyond me just being there. No, no. there is a transfer happening. And that's how God has created us. That's why there are people who can come and rebuke you in maybe a bad behavior, but there isn't that one person who just come and even just give you one word and you stop drinking, you stop smoking. Yet there are people who have told you there before. It is because when we are interacting with each other, we are human beings, there is something in a higher dimension beyond a transaction. You can be served something in the front desk in an office by multiple people, even one who is even very going extra mile to give you a gift. But there's that one person who just, just come and serve you or look at you and literally by just your existence, somebody tell you, you have served me very well. What is that? There's an invisible reality there. There's something beyond the physical reality of the transaction. And that part, AI will never replace. It's a whole process we decode again in the, in the coaching program. And it will help you see that when you pursue your life, you should not be written, oh, our company is implementing AI, automating system. It's okay. Let them automate those uh, reconciliation, debit and credit. You are not created for those things. Those are jobs that were created to make us actually more workers to service um, the industrial revolution two and industrial revolution three. I talk about that in a different context. Maybe we'll discuss that in another way. We are motivated by several drives. I need to close my session now um, in the next few minutes. We have what you call human drives in life, which can also affect how you engage in purpose. There's a drive to acquire, acquire a new title, acquire a property, acquire a laptop. Sometimes we are motivated and make decisions because of the drive to acquire. Drive to board is relationship and connection. That's why we connect in social media, uh, all the social media are around the drive for. A boarding. There's a drive to learn. That's why most of us came here. You are curious because we are born curious. Every human being is curious. So there's a drive to learn. In fact, I usually say if you are not called human being, you could have been called learning being. <laughs> learning beings. We just live by learning. Whether you like it or not, you are learning something. Because our brain is wired for that. Then there's a drive to defend, meaning you want to be secure. There are people who are looking for money so that they are becoming more self-dependent in terms of financially. That's a defense issue. You are defending yourself from poverty. <laughs> or you want to live an inagated estate so that you are secure in terms of physical security. Also, they drive fulfilled because we have emotions. Now, if I was to do an inventory and I do these assessments, you'll find yourself in some of these drives. If these drives are what drives you, one, you can be in business, but sometimes you may not be fulfilled. Only purpose validate the worth of all these human drives. So most by nature, this is by human nature, you'll be driven by the five drives. But if you don't add another dimension of purpose, you will acquire, 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 still no fulfillment. You will board and relate with the thousands of people, social media, have so many likes and comments and hangouts and all that, still no fulfillment. Have you seen people committing suicide after they have come from a retreat? Meaning they were hanging out with their buddies and they come and they will tell you, they write a note and say, I was still lonely. Yet they were hanging out. So it's not about the physical connections of people. No. If you remove purpose in the equation, still there's no fulfillment. That's why we have the three. I know I shared this on Tuesday when I was doing another webinar on purpose, red goal setting, the, the, the three 
uh, you know, motivations again. The drive for having, the drive for executing, and the drive for being. If you're doing set purpose red goals, there's a tendency to set goals based on the execution. We call that the doing, the execution. But we always advise people to set goals based on the being. Who are you becoming? Because that's more the transcending bit and higher dimension of your existence. We may talk, talk about that right now because of time. You have a design that you're created and that your product of a design, you can only achieve your maximum potential if the original condition that created you are fulfilled. I make this statement all over and I'll repeat it here. Only when original conditions of your existence are fulfilled, you'll get um, high potential. So even for employers who are trying to motivate employees, you they will only achieve their highest potential if the original state condition that created them, they are aligned. That's a statement that I can unpack for a whole two hours. So that means impactful leading, it impactful uh, or impact led fulfilling life means that all the balance in terms of the dimensions of life are all kind of balanced. And the security of this is only in the life purpose itself. This is what we call a um, mystery of design. There's a reason why God created some yellow flowers, purple flowers, and I did a bit of study and I discovered there are some insects that only thrive within a yellow flower. That's an ecosystem. And when you take this yellow flower away, you are killing this ecosystem. There are microorganisms and microbiome in this ecosystem. It looks useless to us. We take flowers as beauty. That flower is alive. It's a whole planet of other microorganisms who survive only by that. Question is, if a flower can be an ecosystem of life for other microorganisms, what about a very complex created being called human being? Are you just created for survival? To eat, have merry, make merry, you know, that is it. There's a whole lot of meaning and value for your existence beyond just a transactional life. You're not just born or doing the job that we do. No, there's more higher dimension to that. So I talk about this in a more details, maybe in the forum we may not be able to discuss right now in terms of the mystery of design. This is where we even quote people who don't believe in God. Because by observation of the nature and the intelligent design of the nature itself, you see purpose, literally. And even you also see God, because you cannot be linked purpose and God. The other has to be there who is God himself. Um, I think I talked about that earlier, so I'm not going to repeat. So you have an individual redemptive purpose. Why do you need to pursue your purpose? It make it, it even have a whole benefit in terms of your mental health. I don't think you should be serving purpose and then you have mental issues. Then you say one of the every four people in the world that have mental health conditions. It's a purpose issue. Because if you're doing what God created you know, to do, I don't expect fulfillment. There'll be mental health. Whether you promote you, we give you money, you'll still have no mental health. To make you happy, of course, that's fulfillment. Um, all your gifts are utilized. If you, one of the signs that you are leaving your purpose is all your gifts serve that purpose. Your gifts are the God's fundraising to finance his purpose in your life. So some of us are using one gift, and that's why we have side hustle. One, one symptom of purpose is side hustling. Because when you ask people who tell you, I'm side hustling, because I have this capability, but my employer is not giving me this chance, so I have to do something separately or two other things so that I utilize part of my potential elsewhere. So you feel drowned where you are. It's purposeless life. When you discover your purpose, notice all your gifts, all of them serve that purpose. We call it the singularity of potential. The improved engagement means you're able to produce more, you'll be productive, performance, all those engagements will be there. There's impact in terms of generation, you leave a legacy, you avoid wasteful investments. You stop even doing another master's or another PhD, another certification. Because if it's not aligned to your purpose, it will still be void along the way. It will make you avoid wasteful investments. Heavy relationship, there's something you call non-compete. Purpose is non-compete. When you focus on purpose, you don't compete with anybody. You know why? Because purpose is about becoming. Now, who can become you? That's, a, that's the mystery. Who can become you? Only you can become you. By that reason, other people are not a threat to you. And therefore, you connect better with them. We mostly conflict in relationship because of purpose lessons, if you ask me. Relationship. Because we are competing. Purpose is not competing because I'm unique. 
you are not me, I'm not you, and therefore, if I'm pursuing my purpose, I'm I'm blessing on my lane. You're blessing on your lane. We are not conflicting each other. We live in coexistence. It also promotes resilience. There's even a research that was done during COVID that purpose-led organizations were able to be more able to overcome adversity during this after because they were fulfilling a need and then it's redemptive to other people and the planet. If you answer these five questions, you can say you have a clear idea of you. We call it the purpose mapping. Establish convictions on people, need in the people and community or people and space that mm -hmm. call for a redemption of a redemptive action. It's a simple statement, but that statement, we unpack it in two good weeks talking about conviction. Two good weeks. We talk about conviction only. Then, who do you impact? You are not created for everybody. We call it a niche. You are created for a specific subset of the people and the space. Don't carry the whole world on your back. You cannot. It will be too weighty for you. Then how do you impact them? There must be an active ingredient in you. And it's an example I give of a motivation as public speaker who I was coaching and told me, Gabriel, I thought my public speaking is the one that transformed people. People, He goes into a podium and people are jumping and their energy. And he told me, later I discovered it's not about the public speaking as much as I'm a public speaker. It is the courage and the confidence I radiate in that forum that transform people and make everybody start out and start shouting. You know what? If I give you a Panado today, that Panado over 80% is almost useless. There is what you call active ingredient in the Panado. Not all entire Panado is a paid killer. Go and search. Any drug, even medicine, the entire medicine is not necessarily all of it. Some part of it is a carrier or storage. But when you take, there is always an active ingredient. That's now what we mean by how do I impact? For me as Gabriel, I impact people by changing their paradigm shift in terms of the thinking. Transformational aspect of the thinking. Changing your mindset for me is my how I impact. The outcome of that, of course, the people who say, oh, my business have transformed, it has changed, that was now just outcomes. All that. So this is where usually it's a very catch-22 because you might think writing your book is what is transforming people. You might think serving people in the front desk is what is impact people. You need to discover the active ingredients inside. It might not be what you, you are doing. It is what the other people are receiving that has actually become the purpose. So it's a very, very heavy conversation there. Then how do they change and transform themselves? And then finally, how do you multiply and sustain the impact? This is what you call the purpose map. If you do this comfortably, I can assure you, your life becomes completely different. It's a whole game changer. And as you do this, you have to focus on the being, why you are called a human being, the becoming. Who are you becoming in that process? I think I want to pack there um, um, so that we can have time to reflect. My time is gone. I'm also running away out of charge. I uh, will talk about the next. Barriers to discovering your purpose is careerism, the quest for survive, your mindset issue, the belief system, the worldview, generalization of purpose, lack of confidence, courage to confront the reality, failure to journal your life, and behavioral compressions in terms of procrastinating things. I'll do it next year. I'll do it next time. Uh, that will always uh, remit your purpose. We talk about ikigai, which is meaning in Japan. Um, I will not talk about this today, but I want to give a disclaimer that purpose is not necessarily meaning. The ikigai model more focus on the meaning side, what you call the ikigai. Though it has a direction of purpose, but not every meaning is purpose-led. I have done a video, kindly if you're in the group, and I hope patients can uh, put the link on the group, um, uh, on the chat, so that you can join the group. If you're on the group, I'm going to post a YouTube video. I've done the differences, five differences between purpose and meaning. And you're going to see how that works, okay? But they are related. Eh? I don't mean they are not. They are related, but you find there's a whole um, difference between the two. So I'm not going to pack that. You're going to watch it as a YouTube video. I've done it. Uh, make sure you're in the group. Uh, there's a group we have created for January Purpose Cohort. Eh? So make sure in that group so that you can get that video. It's going to answer this question a bit more in depth. Now you become a purpose-led leader. I'm also not going to focus on this today. I do a whole program on purpose-led leadership, um, um, which use this model. This is the pathway for it, where you establish purpose-led convictions, vulnerability, personal transformation, redemptive impact, humility, and also you get translation at the end 
of day. So again, I won't focus on this for now. So I think I want to pack it so that we can, uh, I can take one or two questions. Um, I'm going to talk about purpose-led business later. I give this case for the Hezekiah model. The Hezekiah tunnel is what I give as a case there. Uh, we are going to discuss that. I want to run all the way to the focus here that we have, we are launching at 10 weeks uh, coaching sales where we help you find, fuel, focus, fulfill, and future-proof your purpose. Um, the program just only goes for Kenya sharing 60,000. It's a 10 weeks. What do you get out of it in terms of the study? I'll give you a purpose hard book. There's a, hard, a workbook that you're going to access that gives you some reflective exercise. You're going to add, access a one-year self-paced videos. You're going to attend 10 live sessions with me. And I'm also going to give you three one-on-one -on -one where now it's not a group where I, I talk to you one-on-one -on -one and help you kind of calibrate your journey. And then, of course, you're going to join the Purpose Red community where you can be receiving our content in an ongoing case. And of course, we are going also to have you attend part of our annual activities where you join Purpose Red community. We have an event we do every October. We call it Purpose Fest. It's an annual Purpose Fest. We do it every October where we do a whole Purpose Red leadership conference and a summit. And I know we had that last year. Um, it was very successful. And when you be part of this, of course, you'll be getting some, when you join the, uh, the network, you'll be getting some uh, waiver in terms of attending some of our forums. We also have we um every event month we hold a purpose red networking forum, a physical. For those who are in Nairobi, we have a physical engagement. I know patients might post maybe the dates. We have one in February. Um, so if you are part of this team, in terms of you are alumni of our programs, mostly will allow you to attend at a very subsidized rate. So 60,000 only, that's what you need to go through the structured program. So there's the free versions I do, like the ones I'm doing today, but you may notice there are concepts where I'm only touching on the service. In the other ones, you go very deep. We go and dissect each one of it uh, very in-depth. You also give you some free assessments. Um, the assessments you do like to gift inventory assessment. It's there. You're going to assess that. Uh, it's an online tool where you assess yourself and you see the spiritual gifts. And out of it, we try to link them into your purpose. A very revolutionary discovery that you will um, thank all that you went through. So I think I want to pack there and maybe solicit any questions that uh, anyone may be having. I'll be glad to respond as we wind up. Any question? If I hand over to maybe Patience, if she has any announcement. I'll also be checking yes, on, the, on the comment. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, Patience. There are some questions in the chat box uh, okay. from Sharon. Yes, uh, the first one is how to do, how do you get to a place of being able to articulate your purpose when she... Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can see it. How, how to do, how do you get to a place of being able to articulate your purpose when sharing with other people? The answer to that is that the way you articulate purpose to others is more need-driven. It will be more than, remember I said, your purpose is actually more, it's a need on other people. On the other side, there's a need. It's being received as a need. If your work is to give encouragement, then there's discouragement on the other side. Okay. So you find how when you package, and I know we will pack that maybe in the deeper conversations, you find that when you're packaging it, because you can use your purpose also for life anyway, in terms of could be a business, could be a mission or engagement, whatever it is. Um. People sometimes mistake purpose with missional activities that are more like helping people, you know, like orphans, uh, going to the abuse, whatever, people, rehabilitating. People think you can do purpose and learn a bank if your purpose is financial, economic empowerment. So who doesn't want financial empowerment? The thing is, are you the one that God is using? And are you truly sure that it's you, you know? So you can learn a business for manufacturing vehicles because God allowed you to run a purpose around mobility so that you promote God's work and human connections. And then it has an impact on people, but there's business out of it. 
So people sometimes mistake purpose with this mission of things of visiting children's home. That's not necessarily purpose. In fact, you can visit for the sake of silencing your guilt. <laughs> Sorry for use that word. Eh? Silencing your guilt for being purpose. That's why even companies start what you call CSR. Some of the CSR programs are silencing the guilt. They are not really purpose. You serve purpose by the core business. So where do you run the line of pursuing purpose and supporting other people's vision? How do you maximize? Um, it's very quite straightforward there, uh, Sharon. This is a very targeted question. You need other people in collaboration. As I said, only you who can become you. So we are not in competition. But there is complementation between us because God has made sure we are entangled. We are joined at the hip. So the basis that in my line of duty, I need people who have complementation. They can complement what I don't have. And I can also complement what they don't have. And through that, it's not a complete engagement. So we can literally be able to serve our purpose without necessarily feeling like I'm overdoing or I'm over supporting other people. No, if you're doing that which you're supposed to do, you are dispensing your grace, you will never run dry because that grace is not yours. Whenever you find like you are forcing yourself even to energy motivation, it is because it is not purpose. There's no way I will struggle transforming people's mind because the, the fountain, the well that is I'm tapping that from is not from myself. It's from God himself. And God is infinite. He has unlimited grace for me to transform people's mindset. So there's no way I will say, if I was working with my strength, I'll get tired. So stop working on your strength. You need to tap on that redemptive grace. So when that happens, you will never get tired. Wagari Mother never got tired uh, helping us uh, maintain vegetation and protect nature. That's, that's the reality. You will never get tired. You'll be taken to prison. You'll be whatever. But actually, you are smiling when you're in prison because you're serving the purpose. And when you are there, actually, it become a, a legacy for you. We can discuss that uh, as we maybe get into the, the other... Um, engagement. Creating the purpose profile, the purpose map is what is going to help you. Um, hopefully, maybe when we get into the next deep dive, that's why we extended this to 10 weeks because we are spending almost two weeks per each of those levels. So we are going to address uh, some of those areas there. Good. Thank you for the take home. Um, purpose is not for you. There's a link on the group there to join the WhatsApp group that we are having. We are going to post the video, some of the videos there. Um, yes, Anne. Uh, sorry, I know you joined late. Um, all right. Good. Thank you. Thank you for the comment. Thank you, Fred. Yes, we're going to see how to share the content later. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Um, yeah, we accept partial payment of the 60000 so you can pay it in around two installments. Um maximum three instruments, free free to engage patients who is posting there. Uh, we're able to make arrangement for you. You can see we're even doing a free, and I'm even going to do another free session later. Look at on to those forums. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, to get the real meat, you have to go through the normal, the full structured program. Invite us in your organizations for the free, like these free talks I give a lot in your organizations without charging like for one hour or two hours. But of course, now to do the real structured coaching, that's the place where we, of course, uh, will want you to have an investment. Of course, when sometimes you invest in something, you come with some sense of commitment and that helps you a lot. Um, I want to pack there. I think I've tried to address most of the chat, um, the chat I have seen. If I miss something, this is not the end. We can still have more engagement um, even after this. So... Patience, any announcement? I think we have the networking forum. Could invite people, maybe. Patience, are you there? Yes, I'm here. All right. Any announcement as we wind up? So, first of all, is to appreciate you for the eye opening and impactful session. And I hope the session was impactful to each and every one of us, and it has activated our convictions towards a fit living. I've posted the link to the group. You can join in uh, so that you can be able to be receiving the information and interactions and also videos. Uh, we'll send a link 
where people can sign up for the real structured purpose coaching. And we look forward to having another purpose coaching uh, session like this where we can interact and also learn together. So thank you all for attending the meeting. We appreciate you and more information will be on the group. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you, Patience. And to the rest of the team, thank you so much for your time. We look forward to engage more and uh, pass these regards. And uh, my my um, wish for you is to live lives that are fulfilling, impactful, and transcendent. God bless you and have a blessed week ahead. Thank you. And you have too. a blessed week. Welcome. Bye-bye. Thank you.